In this time series video, we're going to be taking a look at the partial autocorrelation function, also abbreviated as PACF. I'm going to continue saying PACF because the other way, it's a mouthful. But regardless, in this video, what we're going to do is going to take a look at the background behind the PACF. Then we're going to take a look at some plots. I'm going to explain how each section of the plot works as well as interpreting them. After that, we're going to talk about the differences between PACF and ACF. And to conclude the video, we'll be taking a look at some basic Python programming. You can plot a PACF in literally just a few lines of code, and you don't have to be a great programmer to do so. A um, lot to cover, so let's take a look at the background behind the PACF. Okay, let's take a look at PACF and how we can plot it. So first, what we need to know is what is an autocorrelation? So autocorrelation refers to the correlation of a time series with a delayed copy of itself as a function of the delay. You can think of this as like daily closing prices of a stock or daily temperature data. So what exactly is the PACF? Well, this is the partial autocorrelation function. So this is the effect of the lag after removing all of the intermediate lags, distinguishes whether a strong correlation at lag three is due to genuine dependency or a spillover effect from lags one and two. So here's the formula over it, right? So y at t is the value of the time series at time t. Alpha is a constant, which is the intercept. Beta, right, beta one, beta two, all the way through beta k are the coefficients for the lags from lag one to lag k. Then we have the error term residual at time t. So here's the different lag values, right? So we have lag two and also lag three. And if you want to find the specific value, you would grab it uh, when it's the last term, right? So that beta two or beta three. The value of the alpha and error is going to be different in each equation, right? As is going to be the beta value. So beta two in lag two is not going to be the same as beta two in lag three. The same with that alpha value as well as the error term. They're going to be completely. The value of the coefficients in this PACF are going to range from negative one to one, indicating the strength and direction of the correlation. And you can see over here, right, the values associated with it. Although this is a little bit cut off, so those negatives aren't specifically shown. But believe me, those are negatives, right? It's below zero. Um, for this as well, the blue area is the significance bound, which is the 95% confidence interval. It indicates the range which you would expect random noise or white noise to, to fall if there's no real autocorrelation. Significant lag is if the line is above the blue significance bounds. This suggests that this lag has a direct effect on the value of the time series independent of other lags. And again, as I mentioned in the ECF video, right, we're going to start at zero. It's going to be one. And then you can see this one has a direct impact. So, for example, if the PECF plot shows a significant spike at lag three, it means that y at t is significantly correlated with y at t minus three, even after accounting for the influence of lags one and two. And you can see this right over here, right? This is significance. And this is an example also of the dashed lines versus blue section. So these are two different versions you'll see, right? You'll either see like a blue section like this, or you'll see this dashed line like this. Again, both just two different ways to represent the data. And uh, they're if you have a preference, feel free to use it, but just trying to show you different copies. The cutoff point in the PACF plot is where the spikes drop or remain within the confidence bounds, suggesting that the higher lags do not significantly contribute to explaining the current values of the time series. Now, on a recursive model, the PACF typically cuts off after lag P, meaning only P lags should be included in the model. You can see right over here, right? This one, there's a sharp drop off right after lag one. Some of these look like they're close on the border, but they're all within this confidence interval. A slow decaying PACF plot may indicate the presence of seasonality in data. This would be an example of a slow decay, right? And if the PACF does not show a clear cutoff, it might suggest that the error model may not be a good fit or the data still needs to benefit from additional pre-processing or transformation. Again, we'll cover that in a different video, but this would be an example of that, right? Um, data is all over the place in this instance. It's not stationary. So what's the difference? The difference between ACF and PACF is the inclusion or exclusion of indirect correlations in the calculation. ACF shows the total correlations while PACF isolates the direct effect. ACF to assess the overall order correlation patterns and help with the moving average model order PASF to assess how much lag contributes directly to the series used for with autoregressive uh, order. So covered a lot. 
Now let's jump into some Python programming now. So make sure to grab your notebook. Uh, the coding will be the easiest part of this video. All right, so let's get started. Uh, import a few things. So import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt from stats models graphics tsa plots import plot pacf um, that's what we'll need for this video and let's start off by bringing in some data so we're going to see our data frame equals pd dot read csv and what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this all stocks five years i'm going to put the link to it this is straight from kaggle and just download it and uh, grab the link content all stocks five years just dragged it right into over here um, okay so let me just delete that and we'll keep moving forward all right so first thing we should do is look at our head we'll say df head put five over here just to make sure that this is working properly it is so we're good and uh yeah so what we're going to do is define our apple stock so we'll say apple stock equals df inside of here df name equals apple so apl and then we're just grabbing the close value so close like that great and then now we can plot out pacf and this first one's not going to be stationary our second example will be stationary so not stationary and no worries if you don't know what that means we'll explain it in another youtube video um, I'll put the link also to that down below if you aren't too familiar with it, but this video isn't focusing on stationary data. I just wanted to plot this out twice. Um, so that way you guys get a little experience with it. So let's say plot dot figure. We'll put our fig size, fig size equals 10.5 like that, right? Plot PACF, we'll put in our Apple stock. So Apple stock, set our lags, lags equal to 40. And then set your marker size so marker size will be the dots uh, and i recommend that you change your marker size so that way you could utilize the graph a little bit better sometimes you have to make it a little bit smaller sometimes you can keep it the same size it really just depends on how large your fig size is and depending on your data so next we want to set up title so plt.title and we'll put over here partial auto correlation function function PACF for Apple closing prices. And then lastly, just plt.show, right? Pop this out. Again, this is what you saw already in the slides. Put this in over here, right? Uh, and we have that one significant right over here. And then everything else looks like it's pretty much contained inside right? And what I want to do next is what we're going to take a look at is stationary. So we'll put over here stationary, stationary. And I'm just going to do really quick is log indifference. So apple stock log equals np.log, pass an apple stock, right? And then what we'll do next is we'll do the difference. So apple stock diff equals apple stock log dot diff and we're also going to drop any any values so drop an a great so we have both of those over here now actually do have an error let's drop miss the r that's all right and now we have our different data um, which is stationary and we'll just plot again so let's say plt dot figure set your fig size so fig size equals 10.5 then plots PACF apple stock diff should be diff over here right set your lags lags equal to 40 and then marker size marker size equals 4 plt dot title PACF well I guess you can literally just grab the same title Probably worth mentioning the difference, but it's okay. Uh, just show this 
and uh, yeah, check it out. Partial autocorrelation function for PACF for Apple. And look, now we only have that one, uh, which isn't even the lag, right? This is uh, starting at zero, lag one over here. Uh, this might be close, right? That might be close as well. Um, we can always go over here and change the marker size if we want to. So like you can say marker size of two, you'll see it is much smaller now. And it does look like both of these are possibly out of this confidence interval. Um, see that slightly. But regardless, yeah, that's essentially it, right? Bring in stats models, um, plot PACF, pass in your data, set the amount of lags you want to show, set your marker size, and you are good to go. You can always customize plots as needed. But yeah, that's about it. And that is the video on the PACF partial autocorrelation function. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found some value from it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're uploading a few different data science and AI videos every single week. And if you want to continue this time series playlist video videos linked down below in the description, or you can click on our playlist right over here.